Hello students, about time we get back with our studies. Welcome back. Today, as per lot of requests, I am going to start off with essential oils. What is an essential oil? What is an essential oil? It's an aromatic volatile substance. This concentrated natural oils in plants, also called scented oil or volatile perfume oil. Organic, these organic constituents promote beneficial responses when applied or inhaled. Let us find out, children, from which plant we can, from which plant parts we can get it. So, what are the plant parts from which we can procure it? There's flowers. The example is rose, leaves, roots, seeds. I mentioned the uh, example in the bracket. Grasses, roots, rhizomes, wood, bark, tree blossoms, bulbs, and dried flower buds like the clove. These are some of the examples. Now, let us talk about the composition of the essential oils. Complex mixtures of low molecular weight, these are. They are volatile and semi-volatile organic compounds, originating from a single botanical source that determines specific aroma, flavor and fragrance of the plants. Besides, terpenes are the key components. Polyphen polyphenides, propionides frequently occur along with terpenes in some families. Let us find out in which plant families we can get these essential oils because they are of medicinal and industrial value. Aliasi, Apiasi, Asteraceae, Lamiaceae, Meritaceae, Poaceae, Piperaceae, Scupraceae, Lauraceae, Pineaceae, Zingiberaceae and Rutaceae. We know their composition, we know their characteristics, we know in which families they are present, in which plant part they are present. Now we would like to know where they are stored in the plant. The storage within plants takes place in external excretory structures and internal excretory structures. In external excretory structures, the example is glandular trichomes in basil, lavender, rosemary, etc. Well, as in internal excretory structures, they are stored in excretory ducts like spruce, juniper, cypress, most of the gymnosperms, and in excretory cavities like lemon, lime and orange. Children, we should know the biological role of essential oils. What is their biological role in within the plants? Why plants are producing it? Because we know they are volatile, they are aromatic, they are organic compounds. At the same time, they are secondary metabolites produced as a result of some action, some stress, some defensive mechanism. And let us see. They are produced by the plants to attract pollinators and dispersal agents. The aroma. We can see the honeybee is getting attracted to the plants because of the production of these essential oils. What else they do? They play a role in allelopathy. I have already spoken to you about allelopathy. It is a mechanism by which plants produce some such secretions which does not allow any other plant to grow in the close vicinity. So the example is can you see what it is? It is Juglans regia, the walnut tree. I have given you the example of this. Can you see in the picture? There are no plants growing in under below the canopy. Can you see? None is growing there. It doesn't allow it. This is called allelopathy. And what is the and what else they do? They are also playing some defensive role. Now let us find out uses of these essential oils where they can be utilized in pharmaceuticals, and cosmetics, perfumery, food industry, detergents, soap, toilet product manufacturing and insect as insect repellents. Children, we know their structure, we know their composition, we know in which plant families they are present, in which plant parts they are present, what is their biological role, and what are their uses? Now, the only thing which remains is extraction. Means how to extract them from the plant parts, or the plants which we know. How to extract? So we should know the methods of extraction. 
There are three primary ways to extract essential oils from their plant sources. Since time immemorial, we have been doing the simple method that is expression or cold press. And this is how the example is there. You can see the man with the pestle and mortar. It is a simple method of extracting these essential oils by expression or cold press. You can see animals being used to take out the essential oils. You can see here the simple example in Mumbai being that of sugarcane juice. The second method is distillation and the third method is solvent extraction. These are the primary methods. There can be some new methods also but you need to focus on at present on these three primary methods. We are studying extraction methods. First was expression and second was second is distillation. Since childhood we have been studying what is distillation. We just take material, we have to separate out things, we just boil it, whatever is volatile then we just get converted into vapors and then with the help of the condenser we cool it and collect the condensed material in another bottle. Same is the principle which is applied for extraction of essential oils because that is the first component the moment you take it out it is aromatic, it is volatile so it will try to come out first when you boil it in a beaker or in a, in a, in a round bottom flask whatever it is which is connected to a condenser. So what happens that the vapors come out, they get cooled and they are collected in separate bottles and that time only the lid is kept immediately on the top. So what are the various methods of distillation? Water distillation, the principle is same. Water distillation, only water is utilized. Like this old method, I don't know which yantra it is but it is being used. This is a picture taken out from Google Images only. But this is an old method for used for making arkas in Ayurveda. That is nothing but only the droplets which are condensed and cooled and they are collected in the bottles and used as medicine. Then we have this is also this is the modern way and then we have water and steam distillation in which we go in for both the material is kept in water as well as steam is passed over it and then the vapors are collected condensed the principle is same and then collected in the uh, bottles different bottles clean uh, sterilized bottles and used whenever we require them. The last but not least is steam distillation which we utilize in today. In steam distillation, we use both steam, only steam, no water and we allow the material, we take the material, crush it, keep it in a retort or keep it in a beaker or keep it in a flask or keep it in a big container and just pass steam over it and these volatile oils are liberated, they are con collected, condensed and by means of condenser only they are condensed and they are collected in the form of liquid again since it's volatile so the lid is completely kept over the bottle in which the condensed material is collected. The first method is of extraction is expression. The second method is distillation. The three different methods under distillation you found out with water distillation, water and steam, steam only and the third method is solvent extraction. Come on children tell me what is solvent extraction also called? You know it? Yes, it is called liquid, liquid extraction because we are using ethanol or hexane as a solvent. What is it used for? It is used for delicate plant material. If you are using delicate plant parts such as flowers, some petals which are very delicate, so that time only we use solvent extraction method. See, you can see the figure. It is here. You can see how the method is employed and how we extract by means of solvent extraction, the only problem is that we have to remove the solvent which we have used, it is a chemical, before using that particular product. And what is the problem, what is the other drawback with solvent extraction is it is costly and complicated. Now, by now, your students, you must have understood what are essential oil, what are their uses, what is their biological role, what is their characteristic, how they are extracted and how they are used. They are used in pharmaceutical industries, in essence industry, in aromatherapy. You can see here how the essential oil different brands are producing. Lot many people have got employment. It's a nice source of employment generation. 
you can see here different brands producing these essential oils you can see here the scents different scents you can find in the market under different brand names and come on tell me what is this picture yes these are atars the perfume oils the concentrated perfumes these were introduced in india by moguls they used to like these atars they are crude extracts of the plant the essential oils but they are very concentrated last but not least these are some of the references in the end thank you for patient listening and for suggesting topics for more lectures you can contact me goodbye